And I had a couple more, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on the, we we're talking about poll books earlier, and uh, I think the bill that was dropped in uh, says that it would be on the. I'm paraphrasing. It would be on the election judge, the precinct judge, to ensure that the poll books and other equipment were not connected to the internet. And, and how and how would they do? How would they have the knowledge or the expertise? What if it was wireless or something connected to the internet? Well, first off, know? the poll book has to be connected to a network. That prevents double voting, because if you vote here, your name shows over here. You voted. Um, especially in early advance voted, and that's by federal law. They have to be connected to a network. We just want it non-discoverable so that people can't hack it. Voting machines so, are... Can, can I just stop right there and, yeah. and try to get... A, I'm trying to understand. So you said you didn't want connections to the Internet, but now you're saying that the EAC says that they have to be... that the poll books have no, to be okay. connected? This, this, let, okay. uh, let me reiterate. Poll books and voting machines are two different things. Right. Think about when you go to vote, the first thing you do is you give your driver's license like in your county, and they scan it, and then you sign the poll book. And you have to have your name, address. And an ID. Phone number. You don't need your phone number. Name, address, social security. Voter ID. That's it. No social security. No. You only need that to register to vote. Okay. So then you, you, once you, they get your voter ID, and you sign this, sorry about that. Once you get the voter ID, and a person with a card escorts you to a machine, because that poll book cannot talk to the machine. They put the card in there, and that's your ballot. That's what programs the screen, the touch screen, what your ballot is, which is specific for your precinct. Once you vote, it prints off a sheet of paper. You take that sheet of paper, which is actual ballot that gets tabulated, and you put it in the tabulator, because that machine cannot talk to the tabulator. The poll book is the only thing on a network. Okay. The only thing that we want to put in statute that can't be on a network is the touch screen and the tabulator. And, and sorry that I interrupted you when you were answering that earlier, but I was just wanting to follow up on that. So then uh, how would the judge uh, know how to ensure that a wireless connection wasn't there for a machine or a tabulator? We've had this circular argument for a while. First off, it would be discoverable. Now, we want to encrypt it on the poll book so it's not, but on the machine, you can, you can get scanners that say, oh, it's got a signal, but then do you trust the scanner? So now you got a scanner for the scanner, and eventually it becomes cir cir circular because it's a never-ending argument. But if it's not pinging today, if it's not sending a beacon, it can't turn on because it would need to have a connection to turn on. Think of it like this. I can go onto my computer and find my iPhone, but if I turn my iPhone off, I can't find it, and I can't turn it on because it's no longer on a network. So if they were on a network, they're not on a network now. They can't get back on the network unless a volunteer physically opened a machine and found a switch and turned it on, just like on your phone. Once you turn your phone off, it's off the network. You cannot remotely turn it on because it's not connected to anything.